Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Friday the 18th of February. If you didn't catch it yesterday, do and try and watch the video with Dr. Plitz from Austria, where we talk about uh, naturally acquired immunity. Some really profound stuff on there. Do try and watch it. I'm going to start off with some orientation, which I think is basically fairly encouraging. So here we have uh, new cases. Now, the Netherlands, of course, the cases had jumped up dramatically with Omicron, obviously, and now they've jumped down dramatically, which is, is good to see. Cases are down there. Now, the degree to which that is a reduction in cases or a reduction in testing, I'm not so sure. Uh, but let's look at some other countries, Australia, United Kingdom, United States, New Zealand, Canada. Well, the trends are all down there. But in the United Kingdom, this downward trend in cases is probably not as real as this looks. So there are some testing problems. And basically, the UK government is talking about stopping giving away free tests. And I don't think many people will buy them. So I think the era of mass testing is probably coming to an end. So this data here that we have used for quite some time is probably becoming a little uh, fragmentary now. But uh, the variant data is, uh, is pretty good. Um, we think this is accurate and, well, speaks for itself. It's uh, Omicron. Uh, having displaced uh, having displaced Delta virtually everywhere, still a little bit in New Zealand, but so uh, still sporadic in New Zealand. Uh, now the R value, so that's the R value of one there. Now uh, the Netherlands, we see the R value is just about to go uh, into negative below one, where cases start dropping. New Zealand has gone up quite dramatically. And I must say, this is exactly what we said would happen because it's Omicron in New Zealand. It was bound to spread throughout the country rapidly. But then we've got uh, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, United States um, going down. But as we say, that's based on testing data. So um, this is less reliable than it was. Than this, this chart is much less reliable than it was a few weeks ago as testing data becomes patchy. But this is completely reliable, patients in hospital. Um, so the United States going down nicely, Canada going down nicely, United Kingdom going down nicely, Australia going down nicely, Netherlands, again, a bit of a delay. Things were a little behind the rest of, well, behind the UK and behind the United States and uh, behind, certainly behind South Africa and Netherlands, but, but uh, not, not expecting that to go up dramatically. So we know this is accurate. So th this is the important data, of course, how many people are hospitalized and it's going down really quite well in most, well, in these, all of these countries. Uh, deaths also going down. The fact that deaths, now again, the death data um, it is completely reliable. It's not like testing data where some gets through and some doesn't. The testing data is like the hospitalization data, completely reliable. And of course, it's the more important data set as well. United States still high. I mean, the, the official deaths in the United States are, are well over 900,000 now. And the excess deaths in, in the pandemic period in the United States are, are well over a million. So no question, there's been a lot of deaths in the States. Um, but starting to come down now, albeit painfully slowly, Canada, the United Kingdom going down, Australia, Netherlands and uh, New Zealand um, I'm afraid there might be a few deaths in New Zealand, but hopefully very few due to the high vaccine uptake uh, in that in that country. So that's some orientation. Now, I just want to look at um, California now. now. Now, this is based on this new document from the California Health Authorities, and these two certainly seem pretty pleased with it. Uh, California Smarter. I always do find it slightly disconcerting when people think they're being clever. But um, the whole document's there. It is. It, it does merit a, a look through. And uh, you've got the contents. And I'm not going to go through it in detail, but it seems that um, quite a lot of it is based on things that have been learnt in the past that did work in the past, but I'm not sure will necessarily work in the future. So it seems like they're going to rely quite widely on uh, shots, on vaccinations, on masks and various other things there that are quite hard to argue with. Um, my, my, my question is, are these things that have been beneficial in the past, are they still going to be beneficial as we move into uh, endemicity, as we move into the mass immunity that's being generated by what many might think is the helpful arrival of, uh, of Omicron? 
Now, having said that, Omicron has caused a lot of deaths in the States. There's no question about it. But had Delta carried on, it may well have caused more. So just slightly concerned about the strategy there. And um, I'm just hoping that it's not politicised as well. And I don't say that sarcastically. I'm just hoping that it's not. Because it does tend to give a very sort of optimistic uh, self congratulatory view um and uh, if you live in california you're better placed than i to decide if your authorities have in fact been smart given that the the large amount of deaths that we have had in california so moving on to the uh, zoe covid symptom tracker data overall ukr 0.9 so cases are going down but england and wales uh, and scotland showing different figures so england going down wales about level scotland actually going up at the moment and in terms of prevalence, I think we have to remember that uh, the prevalence is still very high. So as of now, one in 25 people in the UK have symptomatic COVID. Now, the Office for National Statistics, their official data is one in 20. But of course, that's a bit out of date. So we are starting to see a reduction in cases now. And, and that reduction will come out next week on the uh, on the Office for National Statistics official data. I think we can safely say. And uh, at least 36.7% of cold-like symptoms are likely to have are likely to be symptomatic COVID-19. So 36, 37% of colds or cold common cold type features in the UK at the moment are in actual fact caused by uh, caused by COVID, as per the, uh, the, the the current symptoms that we recognise or Tim Spector's group recognises. So Tim says uh, cases remain historically high. One in 25 people currently have COVID. Yes, but we're also developing very high levels of immunity, as I'm sure Tim would uh, recognise. And numbers are still increasing in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Hospital and ICU admissions are low, which is very gratifying, despite rising cases. Uh, the Zoe data doesn't yet suggest we've entered a stable or endemic phase. And Tim is talking about deja vu. So the point is... When you become endemic, it becomes stable and predictable. And at the moment, to be quite honest, it's not predictable. And this is what Tim means. Now, by de deja vu, I think he means this. <laughs> this is where we are now, and it looks suspiciously like, well, we're there now, and it looks suspiciously like this. So I think that's what Tim's talking about for a feeling of deja vu there. Looking at the other data, uh, th th these are new cases, and we do see they have started to go down slightly. And as we've said, that will be reflected in the Office of National Statistics uh, data next week but tim's absolutely right we can't say it's endemic because it's still unpredictable we don't know where this is going to go yet we assume this is going to go down or will it stay will it stay bobbing along this peak going up and down a bit for, for some time we, we don't know it's not endemic so we can't predict it it's, it's completely correct so we still really don't know but we are encouraged by the large amount of natural immunity that's being developed and we are encouraged by the continuing reduction in hospitalizations which of course is uh, what we hope to see continue and i believe we will see continue so incidence rate by region this was the big london peak here so you can always look at tim Spector's site i've put i've put it all i always put the link on there but basically we see in most regions of england at least Cases are going down, but in Wales they're flat, and in Scotland they're going up a little bit. And here we see that incidence rate in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. So, well, Northern Ireland going quite high, actually. England going down, Scotland going up, and Wales, Wales in red, roughly flat, exactly as the R values uh, indicated. And of course, the UK average, because most people in England, uh, most people in the UK live in England, uh, that, that affects the overall average, mostly giving us a, an overall negative R value, but uh, hiding those uh, regional differences. Incidents by age group, so 0 to 17 is going down, 18 to 34 is pretty flat. Um, good to see the reduction in the parental generation and the older generation still lower numbers overall and uh, these are the comparison of new common cold type features so here we have uh, covid with respiratory symptoms so basically this blue line if you like is covid colds which basically did 
have a higher prevalence than non-COVID colds. So this is colds, co colds caused by all the other viruses. And of course, this will include the other uh, four endemic coronaviruses, as well as the rhinoviruses and other things that cause colds. So we see a lot of the cold type features still caused by uh, COVID in the, in the United Kingdom. And that's, uh, that's uh, Tim's deja vu there. It is remarkably, <laughs> remarkably uh, reminiscent of what we had before. Uh, a bit of a roller coaster making it very, very difficult to predict. We'll be truly endemic when we can predict what's going to happen, when, when you know, the cases are predictable and bumbling along from week to week. But of course, by that time, we probably won't be measuring it. So, so th that, that's what Tim means by his deja vu, and I see exactly what he means. Now, uh, Tim Spector says this, my advice would you still be self-isolating for five days from the first symptoms when infection is high? So, so basically Tim's still advocating uh, slowing down the spread of the virus. Although um, it's really hard to see how this can be done. Omicron is going to be, well, it's most places now and it's going to be everywhere. And uh, I I'm we can all expect to be infected with Omicron. I tested two days ago and I still haven't got it. So um, I don't know. I'd love to have an antibody test. I was actually talking to my GP secretary this morning and I said, can I have an antibody test, please? And the answer was less than uh, less than encouraging. So, I mean, the question in my mind is if if natural immunity is giving probably better immunity than vaccination, wouldn't it be cheaper to do antibody tests than it would to carry on with a vaccination program? But that's not the way we're going, unfortunately. Now, just to finish off, uh, some news from Australia. New South Wales government updates uh, to COVID-19 uh, ease uh, conditions. That's all on that site. I haven't got it open. So basically, uh, New South Wales, of course, have... Uh, but largely come through their Omicron wave. Some restrictions today, uh, some more restrictions next week. Hospitalizations and ICU rates are declining. Booster uptake is good. And of course, uh, Australia has needed the, uh, the vaccination program because it didn't have any natural immunity. So the fact that the um, pandemic has been as mild as it has in Australia in terms of hospitalizations and deaths, I know there's still been problems, but the fact that it's been as mild as it has is due to vaccination. It's worked in the past. But is this the time to move from vaccination towards herd immunity in Australia as everywhere else? To, to, towards natural immunity would, would be my uh, contention. We can't keep vaccinating forever. Stage return of non-urgent surgery across New South Wales, which is good news. Minister of Health for New South Wales. As we're moving into the endemic stage, correct, we're moving into the endemic stage of the COVID-19 pandemic, the best outcome is still to avoid getting the virus by protecting yourself, your family and broader community. Well, is there a contradiction between this, that he is saying we, we still need to prevent it, but is also staying, saying we're becoming endemic? Um, I, I see a tension between those two. In fact, I see a contradiction between those two, but they are direct quotes from what is said. And finally, we'll just mention that uh, Novavax, uh, the first protein vaccine, is now available in Australia. That's the, the site from the Australian Government Department of Health. From the Australian Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation, uh, recommends that no Novavax COVID-19 vaccine can be used for the primary course of COVID-19 vaccines in people aged 18 and over. And of course, the Novavax is protein-based. So this is not an adenovirus vector vaccine. This is not an mRNA vaccine. It's giving the proteinaceous antigen directly with an adjuvant. And um, that sounds quite a promising way to go. Novavax COVID-19 can be administered to pregnant women and breastfeeding, they're saying. Uh, people with severe immunocompromised are recommended to receive three primary doses of COVID-19 vaccine and Novavax can be uh, used for this. Uh, heterologous use in other words it can be mixed with other vaccines hetero but then they say not currently recommended as a booster vaccine so those two do sort of that one and that one don't quite chime together there's looks like a bit of contradiction there but basically they do seem to be saying that you can mix and match uh, in fact they say that can be co-administered with other vaccines if required so but quite why they're not using it as a booster um 
or recommended for a boost, I don't quite know. Myocarditis, a direct quote from the site, it is not possible to determine if there is a causal relationship or to estimate the risk of uh, myocarditis associated with this vaccine. So we do know that there's a small risk of myocarditis with the other, with the mRNA vaccines. Is this one going to be safer, of course, is the big hope. It's recommended that all COVID-19 vaccine recipients should be aware of the potential signs and symptoms of myocarditis and pericarditis and should uh, seek counselling about when to seek medical attention. So they're saying that people still need to be made aware of the risk of myocarditis and pericarditis without saying it occurs and without saying it can be quantified. And this is reasonable because we simply haven't given large enough numbers of Novavax vaccine to determine that yet. But as we say, the great hope is that this will be safer in terms of side effect profile than the mRNA vaccines. So things moving apace in Australia. Western Australia, I do know that cases are increasing quite rapidly there. And um, I would imagine that Australia has got to open up completely fairly soon now. Uh, New Zealand still seems to be going slowly, although as we saw, cases are going up in New Zealand. That's a quick summary of where we are. Uh, everyone that's getting infected now is developing natural immunity. And, and to me, that is a, that is a very promising uh, development. Thank you for watching.